For today's short tutorial, we're going to make a logo bounce up and down. I'm assuming that on your desktop or wherever you set up a folder for this project, and inside that you have selected a, uh, you've created a sources folder, and you've uh, found all the necessary project files that uh, your instructor has told you to put onto your computer. Let's make a new composition. We're going to call it logo. It is going to be in the NTSC D1 widescreen square pixel format. Uh, that's a preset, by the way. So that determines also the frame rate. And it doesn't determine the duration, so I want you to make it three seconds long. And the background color can be anything you want, but it won't look good if you make it green, white, or black, by the way. Hit OK. You have a new composition. Isn't that lovely? Let's bring in a source. That source, oh, file, import, we need a logo. Now it might be in your sources folder. Uh, the one that I'm going to be using is called srcoffee.ai. And let's drag it into the logo composition. And there it is, nice. And the size that we like today is 125%. Uh, so we're going to scale it up over 100%. So make sure that you've got the continuous rasterization button on. So you see the little sunburst. Hit S for scale and set it to 125. Boom. Okay, that looks fine. Now we want to scale up to this size between 5 frames and 10 frames. So at 5 frames it's going to be invisible at 0 scale and at 10 frames it's going to be this scale because we like it so much. So at 10 frames set a keyframe, boom. It is now a keyframe for where you are at this size because you like it. Go back to 5 frames, make it 0. Boom. Just hit the scale, type 0, and it disappears. Magic! So if we scrub through the timeline, we see that the logo enlarges. Very straightforward. This is something most of you should have done at some point in your lives. But the name of the game of this job is liveliness, animation, fancy stuff. So we want this logo to pop on with some life like a balloon or something. It will start at zero, then get a little bigger before it gets to the size that we like. You might not see that now, but here's how you do it. Go back one frame, just before the size that you like, and set this to your scale to something bigger than 125. Let's try 150 percent. So you've got 0, 150, 125. How does that look? Well, it looks like that. Boink! Boink. Great. So you can do that with all kinds of things. You see that on commercials, logos and things pop up that say stuff. They go boink, 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 boink. Lots of fun. Now, we want to mess around with this some more, and we're going to mess around with scale, but I don't want to mess with these keyframes. So we're going to drop this composition into a new one that we're going to make. So you select the logo composition, and you drag it onto the new composition button. That makes a new composition with the exact same settings as the thing that you dragged onto the button. So if you drag a really big video onto this button, it'll make a composition that, in, that is as big as that really big video. So we will make a composition that is the exact size, as, size and length as the logo comp. It's called Logo 2. That's just the way After Effects works. And it contains the logo composition. And if we scrub through, everything happens as you expect it. But let's rename it. Select it and hit Return. And type in Main. This is our main composition. We're going to do the work in here. Now we want to drop this logo onto the floor and make it bounce. First we have to drop it. Let's uh, make this just a little bigger. And let's say we start the drop at one second, so we like it where it is. Let's just reveal the position, hit P, 
There's the position. Click the position keyframe, and now over five frames, it's going to drop to the floor. Let's zoom in a bit. There it is. Five frames, drop it down to the floor so that it touches. I'm moving the position value so that it touches the floor like that. Now let's just drag this back, back a bit. There we go. So it drops to the floor. Very mechanical, very beginner after effects. And we would be done if we actually like this, but we don't like it. We want to give it some bounce. So to do that, we need to apply a preset which contains an expression to the position property because the position is the thing we want to change. We want the position to bounce up and down. So we just got to apply it to the position. To do that, animation, apply animation preset. Now this animation preset, I got off the internet. I found it at a website that is called www.motion-graphics-exchange.com The Motion Graphics Exchange. If you search for other scripts uh, by using the term bounce, you can find them, but this one is called Inertial Bounce. And it's a terrific site. I recommend you go there and convince everyone you can to advertise on that site if that's possible. I downloaded this FFX file and I inserted it into a place on my computer that made sense. Uh, this is in the user presets folder under After Effects CS5, under Adobe, under Documents, under my user name. Okay? So you select the FFX file and you just hit open. And it applies the preset which contains an expression. You can tell that there's an expression applied because these numbers are red now. That means that there's an expression there. To see this expression, hit the triangle here for position. There's an expression. Where's the rest of it, you ask? If you move your mouse over this little line here, you'll get the double arrow thing, and you reveal the expression. If you were a real uh, code head, gear head, whatever the term is, you might want to mess with this, and you can do that if you want, but not today. So just hide that because it can offend some people. What does that look like? Let's do a RAM preview. So it bounces, and that's what the expression does. It gives you a, a physics-appropriate means of messing with the uh, position. Now, in order for this to work, you already have to have two keyframes here. You have to make the thing drop yourself first, and then it bounces. Great. But the first problem we have is that when it hits the bottom, it goes too far. We don't want that. We want it to hit the bottom and then not go through the floor. We want it to squash. So it's got to get shorter. Well, right now we like its scale here. Making something shorter involves scale, by the way. So let's just select the layer, hold down Shift, and hit S. That keeps position visible. Now we show scale, which is S. Let's make a scale keyframe. Hit the stopwatch to begin our keyframing process for scale. And that is preserving our 100% 100% keyframe, which we like. Now we want to squash this thing so that when it's at its lowest position there, it is touching the floor and not diving through the floor like that. So we need to find that point, and we need to find the next point where it does that, and then the next point, and so on. To find those, we look at the graph that was created by this expression. To see that, we need to click three buttons. One for the position, one, one for the expression, and one for the graph editor. And now we see this is a graph of the height of the logo. See how it mm, dampens is the best word, I suppose. The amplitude is reduced, is I suppose the term of it all. And uh, let's make some scale keyframes. We're going to make all 100% scale keyframes here. That's just the way I'm working on this job. You could do things differently once you uh, get into it. Let's go to the lowest position, which is at this peak. Thank you. Fries are done. 
and hit a keyframe right here. Another one at the valley, keyframe at the next peak. By the way, if you don't see this shape, it's probably because your graph type is a speed graph. Then it looks like that. You can work with that if you're used to it, but today let's work with the value graph. That value graph means the height of the logo as it bounces. So, edit value graph. Boom, there it is. You might have, After Effects might have already selected auto select before you came into this project, and it might have then selected speed graph, but you want the value graph if you're just going to follow what I'm doing. Okay? So let's find the next valley. Click, valley, sorry, that's a peak. Click, valley, click, peak, click, and then at the end, click. Now, all of these are the same. The scale has not changed yet. We're going to alter it ourselves. So down here, squash. We want it to be short yet wide. So we need to deselect the constrain proportions link right here. And let's start squashing. So we want it to be shorter, but we want it to touch the bottom of the frame. Now we also want it to be wider. We make it by the same amount. That's 52, which is uh, 100 minus uh, 48. So set this to 100 plus 48. Okay. Note that these two graphs here are about the same. One is about the same amount. This one's high by the same amount as that one is low. That is your rule of thumb. Now then, up here, when the thing is flying up in the air, we want it to be tall and skinny, uh, but we do not want it to actually touch the floor. So let's just do it a bit. Let's just call it 110, and then let's make this one 90. Okay. And then here, that's the bottom, it's still below, so we want to shrink it a little bit in the height, make it a little shorter so that it touches the floor. That is what we're aiming for here, is that when it goes down, we want it to touch the floor. When it goes up, we want it in the air. So 82, 118. Okay. Now see what we've got going here? This graph? That tells us just what's, what's going on how these things are kind of shrinking in a way. We like that up there, um, but just, let's change it just a little bit. Let's make it 105, how's that look? Yeah, okay, and let's make this one 95. That looks good. And then when we get down to here, uh, it's just a hair. Uh, so let's make that 95 there, is that good? Yeah, and 105. And now I don't think we need to do any more uh, because it's pretty well at the end of its animation. What does that look like? RAM preview. Oh, oh, that's special, isn't it? Isn't that just terrific? So just to recap, in order to see the graph for something, you need to see the graph editor here. You need to click that button. You need to click the button for the position, and you need to click the button for the expression if you've got one. If we didn't have this button clicked, this is what we would see. We would only see the graph for the keyframes that we made. We want to see the graph for the keyframes, or actually for the animation that's created by the expression. So you need to click this one too. Okay? And Bob's your uncle. Look fabulous. So any, uh, any further advice? I can't think of anything except try out this kind of stuff um, and uh, have some fun. The expression can be applied to rotation. It can be applied to a number of other keyframes, but you might get an error in um, if you try to apply it to certain kinds of keyframes. So it doesn't apply to everything, but so far I've tested it on position and rotation, and it seems to work nicely. Okay? Off you go.